We are now joined by Advocate Paul Hoffman from Accountability Now Director. Of course, uh, thank you so much, Advocate, for your time. The story has been developing quite rapidly throughout the day. But let's first uh, get your thoughts, you know, in as far as the court papers filed by the Speaker in the Gauteng High Court in Pretoria are concerned. Firstly, in an effort to prevent, of course, as she says, the NPA and SAPS officials from arresting her. Uh, Secondly, the papers also request, you know, the entire state brief without limitation on the case that's being investigated, including, I would imagine, the docket that is currently, you know, before before the court. Yes, thank thank you, Nati. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, good afternoon to your viewers. I think the first point about the the pending um, urgent interdict application in the High Court is that it's, it's a curious application in which the speaker seems to be trying to get an interdict against uh, threats of imminent arrest by the National Prosecuting Authority. In your intro, the suggestion was made that uh, the Minister of Police had something to do with this case, but in the papers that are filed in court, it is very clear that the entire matter is been handled by the National Prosecuting Authority and that investigators under the investigating directorate of the National Prosecuting Authority are the officials that are involved in the matter, have been investigating the matter, were involved in the search and seizure um, operations earlier this week and um, are uh, apparently eager to... um, bring the matter to a head by charging the speaker on several counts of corruption. Uh, the, the, the high water mark of the case that is brought to, for an interdict against being arrested is, is reliance upon a letter which the prosecutor has written to the attorney acting for the, uh, the speaker in which the um, Advocate says, this office, meaning the National Prosecuting Authority, has informed you, speaking to the attorney, that it seeks to make the process as seamless as possible. However, your apparent delaying may result in a last resort of proceeding as allowed for in terms of Section 40 of the Criminal Procedure Act which is the section of the act that allows the authorities to arrest a person suspected of commission of a crime. So if that is the, the, the high water mark of the case, and it's, uh, it's, it's treated as such in the founding affidavit deposed to by the speaker, the, the speaker will have difficulty persuading a court that the authorities are being anything other than extra nice to the uh, the attorney and to the speaker um, um, in, in relation to what happens next in the case. Mm. It was thought until these papers appeared on the scene that the speaker would present herself at court, and you had an insert just before this interview uh, suggesting that that was anticipated by the media and that there was a a, a rather fruitless uh, bun fight at the uh, Commercial Crimes Court in Pretoria today because nothing happened in relation to this matter. But it seems to me that it's quite clear that there is no desire to arrest the uh, the Speaker and that if uh, she continues to cooperate with the authorities, as she did by allowing them to proceed with the search and seizure operation, uh, the other day, then there, there, there would really be no need at all to um, to, to approach the court for an interdict. Mm. And all of the documentation that is, is claimed or access to which is claimed in the interdict is all documentation that she would be uh, entitled to anyway if the uh, criminal case proceeds. So and, and advocates, it, 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 it seems and advocates, to me the, the, yeah. the lady protests too much.
Yeah, and, and Advocate, just for the benefit of, of our viewers, the documents that you speak of, of course, uh, include witness statement, um, investigators' pocketbooks, diaries, um, and whether they, of course, uh, play a part in the SAPS, as, as you said, the NPA's uh, investigative directorate. But also, if you look at you know her papers, um, she does also uh, go into as far as talking about what this particular case does to her person. I mean, to what extent then is this plea where um, you know, she says that this matter could infringe on her constitutional rights. Um, to what extent do you think that that will fare? I mean, this is not um, the first time we know of a high profile person who goes this route, albeit um, that route did not go as a plan. But this is the first time, of course, the national, um, the speaker of the National Assembly, a very high profile uh, role, uh, you know, goes this particular route. I mean, if we look at her level um, in as far as the legislative is concerned, this is um, akin to the deputy president at executive level and the chief justice, um, uh, you know, from a legal perspective. Uh, perspective, but just talk to us about, I mean, uh, you know, her going at pains to talk about her role in society, the, the timing of this case, how far that will fare. Yes, I'm, I'm afraid that's not going to cut any ice with the court. I suspect that those paragraphs that you've just alluded to about uh, how, how much she, she is going to suffer were put there for the benefit of the media and as part of the grandstanding that is going on. Look, we've got to be realistic about this case. It's, it's a, a, a bribery and corruption matter in which cash is alleged to have been handed to the, the speaker of, on, on several occasions by this um, mysterious complainant who has been shy to um, depose to any affidavit until she herself was charged with fraud in, in relation to other matters and then did a deal. So. This is not the stuff of which proof beyond a reasonable doubt is made, which means that the search and seizure operation, if it taught the police anything, will it will taught the investigators anything, it would have, would have told them whether there was any um, assistance to discharging the onus of proof, which is a, a difficult onus in a criminal case or not. But it seems they are prepared to carry on. They prepared to be nice. They prepared to summons her rather than to arrest her. And uh, this um, uh, application uh, it, it seems to me to be one that is, is done for the, the purpose of the reputation of the trying to preserve the reputation of the speaker rather than for any um, interdict or yeah. uh, order of court that may be obtained when when all of the things that she wants are actually already on the table as far as the uh, the, the attitude of the prosecuting authorities um, is concerned. Advocate, that, that, is, that is the problem that she's going to have with the case. Yeah, Advocate Hoffman, thank you so much uh, for your time.